All right. Welcome, everybody, officially. We're going to look at the new learn.wordpress.org today, and this is going to be an informal tour. We don't have slides or anything like that. We're going to do a, a walkthrough of the new site. So welcome to our informal tour of the new learn.wordpress.org. My name is Catherine Presner, and I am based in Montreal, Canada. And I've been working with WordPress since 2008, originally as a web designer slash developer, and then as a uh, happiness engineer doing tech support. And now I am working with the training team on WordPress.org as a sponsored contributor, helping with everything to do with learn.wordpress.org and related things. So Jonathan, over to you. Sure. Uh, so my name is Jonathan Bossinger. Uh, I am from completely the opposite end of the globe to Catherine. So I'm in Cape Town in South Africa. Um, I have been using WordPress since around 2009, but working with it since around 20, 2016. Um, I was originally a developer. And then a few years ago, I decided that I wanted to switch tech completely. Um, and I discovered this world of developer education, which is sort of sharing, sharing as much as I possibly can. Um, and I was very fortunate to also end up at Automatic um, as a developer educator, also sponsored as Catherine is to work with the training team. So if you've watched any developer focused videos um, on learn.wordpress.org, my voice might sound familiar because I've done quite a few of them there um, up until now. And I'm actually excited to see everybody here today and to sort of, you know, share our our brand new, um, shiny, fresh uh, Learn WordPress site. All right. Awesome. So we're going to start off with a little overview of some of the uh, history of how we got here. So I'm going to share my screen and we will get going with that. All right. All right. So um, also, Jonathan, if you don't want to, if you don't mind keeping an eye on participants and letting them in <laughs> when I'm speaking, that would be a help because I can no longer see that uh, that area. No problem. And I just want to check you are sharing Thank your you. notes right now. That, that was intentional. Oh, that was not intentional. But let me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> that. Yeah. Oh, I don't have anything. Uh, anything exciting on there. Let me share. The other window, thank you for pointing yeah. that out. Okay, cool. All right, so, you know, the training team was started in 2013 and the original focus was on creating materials for WordPress meetup organizers to use. There was a demand for uh, content for meetups and the ability to for a meetup organizer or a presenter to uh, have a lesson plan that would tell them, you know, how to teach a certain topic, whether it was, you know, um, something to do with a plugin or something to do with themes or anything else. So lesson plans were developed, and that was the first focus of the training team. And the, the, those lesson plans were stored in GitHub. And there was a site that is no longer up, but the site housed those lesson plans. And that went on for a number of years um, until Something happened in 2020. I don't know if you heard, but you know something happened in 2020. Um, it was the dreaded P word, the pandemic. And all of a sudden the training team realized that the lesson plans weren't serving the needs of the community around that time. There were no more in-person meetups. Everything was shifting online. And you know the idea was, well, what can we do now to better serve the community? So the team, people involved started creating tutorials. So short videos um, that would talk about a, a different topic. And, uh, you know, again, whether it was, uh, you know, um, you know, they, the, the videos were fairly short, I think maybe five to 10 minutes long, something like that, maybe. Um, and they focused in on one specific topic. And then a site was launched. That's when learn.wordpress.org was launched. And it looked like this. So you might remember this from last week. <laughs> this is how what the site looked like a very until very recently. And the focus, as you can see here, was on the tutorials that I mentioned. 
and lesson plans. So the lesson plans were moved over from GitHub and that was the focus of the site. Um, and then eventually what we had was some um, research, which Jonathan will talk about in a little bit on what are, what are users actually looking for? Let's step back and see what are, what are uh, learners actually looking for when it comes to um, WordPress learning and a longer material started to be developed. So we see there were some courses that started to be added, but still the focus was on tutorials and lesson plans. What we're seeing now, this is what the site looks like now, in case you haven't seen it. And I will put this into the chat just so you can open it up if you wanna take a peek right now. It's learn.wordpress.org. And this is what it looks like now. And I'll go through this in a bit. Uh, well, actually, Jonathan's going to go through this in a bit, um, but you can see that it looks quite different. So I'm going to turn things over to Jonathan, who is going to now share his screen, see how this back and forth works. Um, and also, if you want to learn more about this whole relaunch, I'll pop a post into, into the chat that you can check out later, but it gives really uh, some of the details of the site and how it was remade. Um, Sorry, I'm just taking over now. No so problem. To, I wanted to also just mention something before we continue. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is actually, Catherine, I apologize. I should have mentioned this to you yesterday. But our original tutorials, <clears throat> when we launched in 2020, this is one of the first ones that I created. Um, they were actually around whatever the tutorial creator wanted to create in terms of time. So this tutorial that I created was actually 47 minutes long. Um, <laughs> and one of the things that we realized was that tutorials that long are actually not really beneficial to learners. Um, so, so what Catherine mentioned about that process of keeping the, the tutorial shorter was we realized that these long tutorials were not really beneficial. So we tried to break them down and, and turn them into shorter videos. But I just, I just thought that was interesting um, how, we, how, how quickly we evolved in the space of a very short space of time from, from when we launched 2020, we were very much just trying things. You know, I think everybody was in that phase of just trying things and just doing things and seeing what would work and seeing how we would respond to suddenly being at home. And so that kind of leads into why we are where we are today. Um, but before we do that, let's let's have a look at what it looks like. So as Catherine mentioned, it looks so much nicer, so much cleaner. Um, the design fits along with the current WordPress.org redesign. So it's sort of got a you know a fresh new skin. Uh, we're using much more of the available space. So currently I have my scene, my screen set to uh, 1920 by 1080, and it's a very sort of wide view. So it's using up most of the space. You'll notice that our primary focus uh, at the top here is on sort of getting started. Um, and the word we're using here is, is learning pathways. So this is something that I'm just going to quickly um, open up something for myself on the side here because I have closed down too many windows. <laughs> um, this is something that we, 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 we realized early on that what folks wanted and what folks needed was something that was a little bit more focused. The original Learn WordPress site was sort of very scattershot, uh, very all over the place. Um, and roundabout, and I've got the actual uh, results here. In May of 2023, we released the analysis and results of the individual learner survey. So the learner survey happened in the end of 2022. So after about two years of the, of the Learn site being around. And one of the big things that came out, we, we basically sent out uh, surveys to all of our learners. And one of the big pieces of feedback that we got, um, if you if you scroll through this, and I'll share this link in the chat, um, if I can find my chat window, here it is. Um, there we go. Um, is that folks wanted something more structured. They wanted something that was more predefined if they were a certain type of learner, if they were learning to use WordPress, learning to publish with WordPress, learning to, to develop with WordPress, the content was just too all over the place. Um, and so that's where we came with this idea of what we call learning pathways. And one of the earlier posts that I published at the beginning of, of 2023 was this proposed learning pathway for an introduction to WordPress development. So in my head for about a year or so, I've been thinking about like, what, what would it take for somebody who doesn't know anything about WordPress what would be the core knowledge that they would need to know? Um, I did this and other contributors in the training team did this. And this is where we are now. So we've now done all that research. We've created all that content. And if you start with the start using WordPress link, for example, 
you will see that we have some specifically predefined learning pathways. So you have the beginner WordPress user learning pathway. So this is somebody who's brand new to WordPress. They've never used it before. Um, and it takes them through step by step. What is WordPress? What is a domain? What is hosting? <laughs> you know, all those, all those things we take for granted that your brand new WordPress user knows nothing about. Um, interesting side note, I'm actually helping a friend of mine. He's just started his WordPress journey. Uh, and he he emailed me two days ago to ask me about setting up his DNS for sending out emails. So this is exactly the kind of stuff that he needs. Uh, choosing and installing a theme, choosing and installing a plugin, um, getting used to the interface. So using things like the media library, knowing the difference between posts and pages. So quite a comprehensive step here. We've got, um, I don't think it actually says the top here, but there's one, two, three, four, five, there's seven different modules with a number of lessons in each module, taking the learner through each uh, step of the way. And then once they complete that learning pathway and they feel comfortable, then they can move right onto the next one. So from here, they can go straight onto the intermediate WordPress user learning pathway. Uh, and now we can start thinking about more, more sort of advanced things. So user management, um, creating more advanced content. So we've got a whole list of blocks that we dive into, query loop blocks, content blocks, using the columns block, the row and stack blocks. Um, doing things like customization, personalizing your 404 page, customizing your different templates, um, all the kinds of things that somebody would want to do when they're becoming more comfortable with their WordPress site. Uh, we even have some optimization techniques, some security techniques. Uh, so really taking folks through every single step of the way. Now, the one thing that I wanted to share is that you'll notice that every single one of these lessons has a little preview button next to it. And that is because we don't want any of this content to be locked behind any kind of door. We want it to be completely open for anybody to use. So while you can take this course, and essentially what you're getting when you take this course is it saves your progression. So if you come back to the course later on, you can pick up where you left off. Uh, you can access the quizzes, which will help you test your knowledge and help you reaffirm your, your the, you know, the, the understanding of the course. You can just click on an individual lesson. Um, and it will take you th straight through to that lesson content. And you will be able to watch the lesson video. You'll be able to read the transcripts that may or may not exist. Um, so so we, we don't want to lock you behind. You know, if you, if you, just, you just decide you just want to grab, there's one lesson in there that's interesting to you. Maybe you are somebody working in a support situation um, and you need to sh show somebody how to choose and install a plugin. Well, they can go straight to that lesson. You can share that link with them. It is completely open and public. Anybody can view it and they can go through that process and they don't have to specifically take the course uh, if they don't want to. But if you do want to give the course to somebody, let's say you're working in an environment where you're working with new users, uh, customers, you want to give them some free training. Um, I think very much of the do action charity hackathons that we often do where we build sites for nonprofits. This would be a great course for, for a nonprofit to go to, to get an understanding of how things work. Then they can register for the course and it'll track their progress and they can go through step by step by step. Um, great. The other thing that I wanted to mention, and I just give me one second because I've got windows. I find the Zoom windows tend to overlap each other and then I can't get to the places I need to go. So I'm just going to move some things around on my screen here. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so the other thing to mention, let me hop back one over here. Um, so our initial focus, <clears throat> excuse me, our initial focus was on developers and users. So we have the develop with WordPress section, which I'll dive into quickly in a second. We have the starting with WordPress, which is focus on the users. We are also planning learning pathways for primarily focused at designers. So those who already know how WordPress works, but they want to really dive into designing themes, designing sites, really digging deep into all the design tools that are available to you in the site editor. Um, we also are planning learning pathways for contributors. So once you have gotten used to how WordPress works, once, you, once you're using it, you're comfortable with it, you discover this wonderful thing called the open source WordPress community and you want to start contributing back, we're going to have learning pathways uh, set up for that as well. So these are all the, the pieces of content that we're working on for the future. Um, but currently what we have right now is, is getting started with WordPress and then developing with WordPress. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to share with you. So if I go into the getting started with WordPress um, and I go to the, I think it's in the beginner WordPress user, setting up your pages and posts, I think it is. I just want to find that. Is it? Uh, yeah, here we go. So in the content creation, I want to show something uh, quite, that I think is quite cool anyway. 
What we've also tried to do is we've tried to use as much as we can. We've tried to leverage the WordPress playground or WP playground um, environments. I'm sure you've heard about playground. It's this great way that you can embed a, a instance of WordPress inside of a web page. Um, and you'll see at the bottom of this of this lesson, there is a practical exercise that you can do. So it includes a playground block. So it's a block that has been built for the site editor. Um, and anybody who's going through these lessons can essentially just click on here. And it says, it actually asks us here to create four pages. So I can write here from the lesson, I can click on the pages link in my dashboard. I can add a new page right here. It'll take me through the process of adding the play page in the editor. I'm quickly going to add a page to this one. Okay, let's choose a pattern. That'll be quick and easy. Uh, let's give it a new page title. Um, I can publish this page, and then I can view this page on this instance of the playground. So it takes me right to that page. And so we're trying to make it as easy as possible for anybody to be able to just start testing all this knowledge that they've gathered. Um, and playground and the WordPress playground block really, really make that super, super fun. Uh, and interesting and exciting. The other options we have is for the developer user pathways, sorry, for the developer learning pathways, we can we can embed a code editor in the playground instance. So we can give you practicals where you take some code and you live code it in the in the lesson. Um, and then you can you know showcase that, make changes to it, see what changes break. So we're really trying to use like the best of the tools we have available us to, to us just to make that learning experience less dependent on any external things like local development environments or anything like that. And just really kind of lock in that knowledge that you've just learned as we go through on a lesson by lesson basis. So very, very exciting stuff. Um, I think at least, you know, I was one of the folks working on this. So I'm excited to hear what, what folks think of these new learning pathways. Uh, and I'm now going to hand back over to Catherine, who's going to take us through some of the more uh, design focused changes on the site. All right, let me share my screen again. Okay, thank you for all that, Jonathan. Um, I wanted to just show you sort of an analysis of the page and how the site is organized now. So Jonathan mentioned these learning pathways are here up top because ideally we want the folks who want to get to a specific point in their WordPress journey to see these and be able to dive right in and go through the flow of a whole course. So these are the learning pathways and these are the really the, you know, one of the main and most important focuses of the new site. So, you know, for developing so far, we have beginner WordPress developer, we've got intermediate theme developer, and something that will be coming up next is actually uh, a course on plugin development. And I'll get back to that when we, when we wrap up, but I wanted to show you the two that we have now in development. And then for users, we've got the beginner and the intermediate user, and there will be an advanced WordPress user coming up. We've also got a search box, so you're able to search for things that way, just with a, a keyword. Let's say somebody wants something really specific, um, they can search for it and find it just with a keyword. So below the learning pathway courses, we've got featured courses. So learning pathways are a type of course, they're the ones that are geared for a particular level that we talked about, those four that we have so far. And courses, there can be other types of courses as well. So before Learning Pathways, there were other types of courses that were created. Um, for example, creating a four-page business website, or there's a whole bunch of community-related courses. So if you want to learn about uh, working with WordPress in the community, there are a whole set of courses like that, like Open Source, Basics, and WordPress. And Sorry, if you Catherine, want to see, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Are you are you mm -hmm. sharing your screen right now? Yeah. I am. Do you see it? Okay. I, Zoom changed recently, so that okay, was no problem. Sorry, I got lost. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I noticed that every single time I open up Zoom now, all the icons have changed and everything's moved around. Um, but thank you for checking. Thank you for checking. I appreciate. It. Um, so also just to to mention that courses are a collection of lessons. So you know you're looking at a course when you see. A number of lessons. So this might be a little small, but for example, the beginner WordPress developer has 59 lessons in it. So, you know, the, the course is the container and the lessons are the units within the container. Um, someone in chat mentioned perhaps a different word instead of preview, because mm. you might think that preview only shows you 
a portion of the lesson when in fact it's the whole lesson. I think that's a really good point. I think this is something built into the learning management plugin that we're using called Sensei. So I think uh, I'll, I'll raise a ticket um, for that or an issue in GitHub. Uh, anyone is actually also welcome to raise a ticket or an issue in, in GitHub. Um, it is github.com. I just want to point this out because I think one of the great things about our community is that everything is done in public. Um, and so uh, you are welcome. Anybody is welcome to go to github.com slash WordPress slash learn, then go to issues and click new issue. Um, of course, I'm not logged in right now, so it's prompting me to log in, but I'm going to paste this in the chat. You can report um, a bug or an idea for an enhancement. So this would be an enhancement. It's not something, a bug is something that's not working. An enhancement is an improvement or yeah, an addition or a change. Um, so yeah, so back to this. Yeah, I think that's a, a good point. So thank you to the person who raised it. So yeah, so courses are a collection of lessons. Now below courses, oops, go back to the home page here. Below this featured courses, we've got featured lessons. So lessons can either be part of a course. So if I click, for example, on website optimization, you'll see that it's part of a course, the intermediate WordPress user course, and you can look at this lesson or you can actually register for the course and, and do the quiz like um, Jonathan mentioned earlier. But from what I understand from Jonathan and Wes and the other folks who developed these, these were geared to stand on their own. So that's why we're able to pull them out on the homepage. And they're geared to, if someone just wants to learn about website optimization, you can just do this lesson and you'll have, you know, you'll have the good, the basics here. You don't have to do the whole course uh, if you just want this piece of information. So I think that's very cool. And also you can see all the lessons if you click see all lessons here to the right. And you can also swap um, toggle languages. So we have content in other languages and I'll talk a bit more about that at the end. But if you want to see what is in Deutsch and German, we've got one lesson so far. Uh, person is working on translating these. Uh, so thank you, Rico, if you are here, if you're listening, um, we ran into a bit of a technical snag, but we're, we're going to, we're going to overcome that. Um, so yeah, you can also look for levels. So you, if you want, you can see here, there's a little uh, badge that says this is an intermediate level, this is an, ad is an advanced level, but if you want to see everything that is in each level, you can apply these filters as well. So that is cool. Um, go back to the home page. So those are two content types, courses and lessons. Below that, we've got online workshops and you're in an online workshop right now. So um, ultimately these will have graphics the same way these do. I wanna give a huge shout out to everyone who helped create these graphics. And I know there's some of you on this call. So thank you, Twyla, thank you, Laura. Um, these were something that the design team uh, wanted us to have to make the site more visually interesting. Because if you remember the previous site, before we had these little thumbnail graphics, it was very, very, very text heavy. It was text heavy. Plus, of course, we had the videos. But just, you know, before you actually got to a lesson with a video, it was extremely text heavy. So the design folks created this tool called the thumbnail generator. And then the community really pitched in. There were over 20 folks who helped create these little graphics. Um, so thank you to everyone who did that. I think it was a great example of um, how the team really pulled together and helped to improve the site. So I think that is it for my section now. Um, Jonathan, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about the why or if you want to skip right into the next section, but I will leave that to you. And you talked a bit about the the research that was done um, before. Hundred percent. Now I'm happy. I'm happy to share some more about the why. Yes, I did. I did kind of share a little bit of it. A little bit of a preview. Started awesome. going down a path and realized I needed to rein myself back. So I'm I'm back to the scheduled programming, folks. Um, but as as I was saying earlier, um, you know the why, and I get asked this a lot. You know why this big change? Why why these learning pathways? Um, as I mentioned earlier, when when this all first started, so 
I remember the first video that I created. It was in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, it was August 11th, according to the date on this video. So August 11th, 2020. Um, and the reason my tutorial existed is because the training team was creating content for this launch of the sort of version one of what we know learn WordPress today. Um, and they noticed that there were no videos for developers. So it was all kind of user facing or contributor facing, but nothing really diving into any kind of code. And so what happened was a friend of mine, uh, Hugh Lashbrook, who was a member of the training team at the time, also a member of the community team, and the community team, with, community team was involved in this process. He reached out to me directly and he said, hey, I know you like talking. He and I had spoken at WordCamps in, in Cape Town and Johannesburg in South Africa before. I know you like mentoring and sharing and presenting. Is there any chance you can create a video tutorial for, for this new thing we're launching? And of course, I jumped and I said, yes, let's do this. I just learned how to build blocks. Uh, and so I recorded this 47-minute ramble, really. And if you want to have a good laugh at my early days of creating educational content for Learn WordPress, you can go and watch this video. I don't mind. It's the intro to Gutenberg block development uh, tutorial. It's 47 minutes long. It takes forever. Um, but that's kind of where we started. We didn't know what we were doing. Uh, people were just trying things out. And then over time, we we realized, okay, the videos are too long. We need to make them shorter. We realized there was a need for courses. We started creating courses. Uh, we started uh, working more on online workshops. They were called social learning spaces. They then became online workshops. Uh, and we kind of started refining the process. But as I mentioned, we had this individual learner survey, which happened towards the end of 2022. And if I scroll down uh, to the sort of the, the high level summary of the responses that we got from folks, it was about 600 uh, different learners were surveyed in this in the survey um, and some suggestions for improvement. And you'll see the number one item on this list is more structured pathways through the learning, including graphical representation. So that we realized number one was a primary thing that folks wanted. More mobile friendly, which is something that has definitely been worked on uh, in the design um, and, then, and then going through the rest. But the top one that we got from most folks was more structured learning pathways. And as I mentioned, I started testing this idea with this learning pathway for developers uh, in March 2023. And then in July 2023, uh, Destiny, one of our team reps, she sort of kicked off this project originally, initially. So if you think about it, it's taken us just over a year uh, to go from sort of project kickoff, right, we're going to do this, we, we have an idea, we have a plan, uh, to where we are today. So it's been a year's worth of work, content creation, design, figuring out what the what the new theme is going to look like and all of that. Um, then in about October 2023, uh, Wes posted the initial learning pathway outline. So these were combinations of things we've been discussing with the community teams. Um, you'll, you'll notice there's some sim similarities between my development one and, and the one that we started for beginner developer. Um, and we said, right, we've got some learning pathways. Uh, here are the outlines. So we had this uh, a spreadsheet that we used. So we set up beginner, um, which you'll see a lot of the content Wes has already created for that for that learning pathway. Imme intermediate, which also exists, um, and then and then advanced, which which is currently being worked on. It was originally called expert. We decided to change it to advanced. Then there's also some some designer learning pathways in here somewhere. There they are on this tab. All the designer ones that we're planning on, um, and then all the developer ones. So we set this up as sort of how we see this working. We put it out towards the community and we said, right, give us feedback. Tell us what you think. We had some great community feedback from folks all over, from plugin developers, theme developers, site builders, site users, support folks, um, kind of saying to us, yes, this works, this doesn't. We think this might need to change. And then eventually we kicked this off. And so we started working um, on the very first, I'm actually going to hop on over to GitHub here quickly. Um, and I'm going to show you the very, the very first learning pathway issues that we created. So I'm going to switch to close and I'm going to search for entitled learning pathway. And you will see that uh, now it's giving me things that I don't necessarily want. Um, there's intermediate, there's intermediate user, there's beginner user. There it is over there. So I'm going to open up beginner user and I'm going to open up beginner developer. So beginner user was created November the 15th, 2023. That was when we decided, right, we're going to do this thing. We're going to kick this project off. Um, beginner developer was created uh, November 17th. Uh, and so those are the first two that we started on with. We, we got them finished roughly halfway through, sort of a quarter of the way through this year. Then we moved on to the next two. So intermediate user, uh, intermediate theme developer. Um, and we've just been constantly working on getting these, these, these pathways ready. Um, and here we are today. We've got this brand new site. 
Um, it looks amazing. We have the first the first four learning pathways ready to rock and roll, um, but we need help. Uh, and we will talk about the help that we need later on. We've got all of these other pathways that we want to create, all these other ideas. Uh, and so we need as much feedback and input and, and support as we can from the community to, to make these all happen. Um, Catherine, I, I think that's that's my bit for that, and I'll hand back over to you. <laughs> All right, let me share my screen again. No, I don't think that was the right one. Let me stop sharing. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. So I want to talk a bit about what we're looking for now. Um, we are looking for help to continue making the site great. And uh, we're looking for all kinds of folks. And by we, I mean the training team. So if you're new to uh, the WordPress project, there are different teams that work on different aspects of the software. And I think one of the great things about the training team is we are open to folks who are just beginning their WordPress journey. Um, it's a good place to get started. Um, I want to share the onboarding documentation that we have. We have uh, a great getting started section in our handbook. So each team has a handbook which describes all the processes of the team. And we have a really good getting started section in the handbook. So I'm gonna pop that into, into, into um, the chat box. So we're basically, we're looking for folks to help uh, create content. So to create lessons, to review lessons, to translate lessons and courses, um, all those things. And so if you have a skill that can help expand the site and help build it out, we want you. <laughs> so feel free to check out getting started. Uh, we also have meetings. The training team has meetings and I will just, so if you go to make.wordpress.org slash training, you will see at the top, the schedule for meetings, which are Thursdays at midnight UTC. So that uh, you can convert that time to your own time zone. You can also join the training channel in Slack and chat. I think I think it's one of the friendlier channels in the WordPress Slack. Uh, if you're not familiar with WordPress Slack, it is the chat app that WordPress uses to coordinate the whole project. So those would be some of the things you could do to uh, get started. And also, um, Jonathan put out mm. a post specifically looking for help for the intermediate plugin developer learning pathway. And Jonathan, do you want to say a few words about this specific call, call for help? Mm, sure. So before I do that, uh, and, and Catherine, if you can leave that on screen, because it saves me having to reshare the same, yep. the same article. <laughs> um, before I do that, though, I also just wanted to mention that what, what I always say to folks when I tell them about the training team, and one of the reasons why I was drawn to the training team originally, is that it's one of the teams, and there are a number of teams like this, but not that many. It's one of the teams in the WordPress community that is that that doesn't have too many dependencies on other teams to get things done. Um, I'm the kind of person who likes to get things done. If you go to my WordPress.org profile, it's like the first sentence under my bio. I like to get things done. Um, and often when you try and contribute to WordPress, you you maybe you're a coder and you want to you know submit a patch or you want to fix a bug or whatever your case may be. Often you have to submit a pull request and then you have to wait. And then if nobody responds, then you have to go into a meeting in Slack and then you have to ask somebody to help. And then you have to maybe figure out who the right person is to speak to. Maybe go and see who the who the maintainer is, uh, see if they're still active, figure out who to bug. Um, often it's not very easy to figure out who to speak to. Um, with, with Learn WordPress and with the training team, we are we are very non-dependent on other teams. So there is a little bit of dependency with design uh, and the meta team when it comes to deploying the actual site, but we own and control our own code base. Uh, Catherine shared the GitHub repository earlier. So that repository is where we manage the code for the Learn WordPress website. It's independent from the rest of the, I, when I say independent, I mean the code is independent from the rest of the .org code. So .org's code is all 
uh, in a WordPress.org repository, but learn WordPress.org is a separate repository. So we control that. When folks log bugs, we manage and triage those bugs. We have a thing called Dev Squad that, that I help run that checks in on those issues every week, looks for any new issues that have come in. Um, we, we review the PRs together. So we don't rely on developers from other teams. We handle it ourselves in, internally. When it comes to managing our content, all of our content is managed in that same GitHub repository. So we have content issues, we have code issues. And again, all of our, what we call subject matter experts who are reviewing the content issues uh, are all internal in the training team. So it's only really when we need to sort of advertise what we're doing that we might need to reach out to, for example, the media core, or, or if we need to push the code to the website, we might need to reach out to the meta team. But other than that, we can pretty much get on with it ourselves. Um, and so in my opinion, it's one of the easier teams to get involved with. Uh, there's a lot of, as Catherine said, a lot of friendly folks hanging around. We have a core group of members that are sort of administrating all of the work. Uh, it used to be called the training team faculty, but we've we've retired that whole program. Now they're just active in the training channel. Um, and, there's, and they're almost similar if you've come from other teams like the, tra like the community team. They're similar to the community teams um they call them something else now they used to call them community deputies so they're very active members of the training team uh, the faculty uh, and they're always there to help out we also have a great program guide that we run so if you're new and you and you want to help somebody to take you through that process um we have a process if you can apply to be part of the the training team guide program and somebody will then work through it with you uh, i think i saw vince who's one of my uh, guide program uh, members uh, join this call. So hi, Vince, if you are there, I thought I saw him come in. Um, and so we have we have lots of easy ways for you to get get on board and start contributing. Um, and, and so, as I say, it's, it's one of the easiest ways to do it. Now, Catherine, if you can go back to that uh, call for contributors post that I, that I shared, I think it's in your last tab that's open there. Uh, yes, that one. Um, so yes, the next big learning pathway that I'm working on is the intermediate plugin developer learning pathway. Um, I don't know the exact number right now. There is a link to the GitHub issue there, but I worked out that if I just work on it alone, just me, um, it's going to take me the rest of 2024 to complete. Um, and I would like to see if I can get that done quicker. So if you are somebody who has a background in plugin development, or you have some experience with plugin development and everything that comes along with that, and you are interested in getting involved, um, either in helping to do research and script writing, to do reviews, maybe even to record your voice, to you know, reading a script and recording your voice, or maybe you even have some video editing experience. Um, please do go check out that article, uh, that post, and see where you can get involved, because I would like to build a team of content creators to help me get this learning pathway done. Um, and if you don't have experience in, in plugin development, then please do contact my colleague Wes, who is working currently on uh, user and designer learning pathways, and I'm sure he will be able to use your assistance as well. Okay, that's that's my call to action to get folks involved. <laughs> awesome, thank you. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Actually, I won't stop sharing yet, but I do want to go through some of the questions. We have 20 minutes mm. left, so that's great. And I'm going to go back over some of the questions that we did not get to yet. Um, and if I answered your question in chat, it was because it was not directly related to uh, learn.wordpress.org, so that's why. Um, so someone asked an interesting question. Has anyone considered splitting the user concept into those who use WordPress to read and those who use WordPress to write, plus other use cases like networking, via tagging, et cetera. Um, Jonathan, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I mean, I so think, yeah. I ahead. actually have a follow-up. I have a follow-up question just to clarify that I'm understanding uh, NMW's question there. Do you mean specifically about the content on Learn WordPress or are you specifically talking about the concept of a user in WordPress itself and how a user works? Because those are kind of two different things that will be two different answers. Um, so if you have a chance to maybe pop in a message in the chat and let us know, did you mean specifically the user in, in WordPress itself, or did you mean splitting the learning pathways by user types? And feel free to unmute yourself, uh, the person who asked that question. If it's easier, um, you can ask it over audio. Uh, hello. Hi. Am I audible? Yeah, we hear so you. So I see, I see that you have. So, it looks like you have typed they're not in learning, just WordPress generally. Uh, sorry. 
I say, it looks like you've Yo, typed I'm, in one. Yeah, I'm I'm learning as well as creating one blog, uh, or one site for uh, or with WordPress, and my question is that I have created one one form by using Forminator plugin, and I'm getting multiple values from end user. I mean, uh, who is not logged in into the WordPress right now, right? And we are we are getting multiple uh, values from the users. But those values are not displaying on the post. So why I'm cre I'm getting values to creating post from end user, and those those values are coming into uh, formulator form uh, or or submitted values. But those values are not displaying into the post itself. The post is displaying only title, image, and content instead of the remaining values like city, state. Uh, like like those things phone telephone number or or so so, so um, how can, how i'm gonna i'm gonna take, those I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take this one yeah, so sorry. this workshop is not for technical questions but the okay. good thing is there are support forums which are geared for asking questions about your wordpress uh, development so the the okay. forum that is geared for development related questions is called developing with wordpress and I'm going to put okay. that link in the chat and anyone is welcome. Sure. You'll log in with your wordpress.org account. If you don't have one, it's free to register. You can create one. And this is the spot to ask your question because this is this is not a um, this is not what this workshop is about. Jonathan, I don't know if you have sure. anything else to add. No, no. So I just wanted to get back to, to NMW's question because they actually posted in the chat, not in yeah. learning, but in WordPress in general. And I would actually add that that's a question to ask in that same place. Um, I I don't know if anybody's thought about splitting the user between read and write. I do know that there are user capabilities that you can set um, and you can set whether a certain user role has a certain type of capability. Um, but I don't think anybody's considered, I could be wrong. I don't know all the answers about WordPress core, but to the best of my knowledge, I'm not aware that sort of what has been split between reading and writing. Um, I have I have created users for for projects that can only do certain things by managing capabilities. And so what I'm going to recommend, I'm going to take over um, the screen share quickly, mm -hmm. Catherine, and mm -hmm. just share my my screen here. And I'm actually going to recommend my develop with WordPress um, uh, learning pathway because in one of these, I think we do it in here. I just want to double check this. Uh, I think it was in. No, we don't do it here yet. Okay, I apologize. So it's in the it's in the plugin developer learning pathway, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there is a section on working with users, and there's a section on roles and capabilities. So we have got some content around that. But what I will say is, let's actually go back to here, and I'm going to go to home, and I'm going to search for capabilities because I know I did some tutorials around capabilities. I'm not going to find them now, am I? Um, Catherine, maybe what we can do is, uh, if we can make a note of this, there's some, there's definitely mm -hmm. some tutorials I did on user capabilities. Maybe if we can share them in the okay. meetup uh, chat after this call and then work sure. through those and you should be able to, to define the capabilities that way. Perfect. All right. Um, so a couple of other things. So someone said, um, finally, I don't need to create some guides for my clients. I can send them links to official lessons. And that's a really amazing thing to hear because that is one of the whole points of this is to not have to reinvent the wheel or keep creating materials on your own. Um, it's going to save a lot of people a lot of work, I think, to be able to do that. So thank you for pointing that out um, because I think it's an excellent thing to acknowledge and um, bring to the forefront one of the great benefits of this as you can now do that I remember I used to write out you know 20 page pdf guides for my clients on how to manage their site and of course there might be specifics that are specific to your client's site if you manage sites for clients um, so you could have a little addendum, you know, maybe it'll be a one page PDF or, you know, something online instead of uh, what we what we used to have to do. 
So someone just sent me a direct message to say, to ask if there will be a video of this uh, made available. And yes, absolutely. Like almost all our online videos, we will provide a recording. So check out the comments in the meetup group. So when I post the video, I will put it in the comments in the meetup group and it will be on wordpress.tv. That's where it lives. Uh, we have a question about certifications, which is a, a great question that we get a lot. So the question is, do you have a plan to make a certification like in Magento? So this question has come up over the years um, and with the relaunch, it has come up more and more. So the answer that I have is that the courses and learning pathways are designed as free resources for learners of all skill levels to enhance their WordPress journey, and they aim to help improve your skills, find solutions to problems, achieve success in various areas without being tied to any particular certification. So you're welcome to do things like list the courses that you've taken on your LinkedIn profile, but there's no certificates. Um, so what I want to show is that they do show up publicly on your, I'm just gonna take over from you and share an example of a profile. So this person, completed the course beginner. I'll just make this a little bigger. Uh, beginner WordPress user on learn.wordpress.org. So it does show up on your profile. So you do have kind of some proof that you uh, completed the course. Um, but there are no certificates. And over the years, the question of certificates has come up. And there are some um, previous discussions that are on the learn.wordpress, uh, uh, sorry, on the make training team P2 about certification. So you can read about a little bit about why, why there are no certifications. It's very, 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 very tricky. It, it maybe seems simple, but it's a very complicated issue. And so it's a big can of worms. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day there will be certifications, but uh, let me just see if I can find it so that I can at least, um, link to 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 the post about certifications and then while you can read up on it mm -hmm. while you're searching um i also just want to share that one of the biggest uh factors of providing certifications is the certifications need to be somehow manually certified by someone so someone needs to go through a process of you know checking some kind of test or some kind of something that someone writes um i always i always think about the zen certification in php um you know there's a there's a series of of content that you need to study from and then you go and write a specific test with a bunch of questions and then if you pass that test um, you get your certification um, a lot of that can obviously be automated so the great thing about things like uh, wp playground and various other tools is that we can automate a lot of these things um, at the moment, the focus is on creating the content. Um, and then once we have the content, then we can talk about how do we then certify people taking this content. Uh, so as, as Catherine mentions, it is definitely something that, that we have been discussing for a number of years. You can see here, Hugh Lashbrook's post in 2022 was when we started talking about it. Um, so it's on, you know, I smiled when the question came up because Catherine and I both know whenever... Whenever we talk about Learn WordPress in workshops, at meetups, at 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 WordCamps, there's always someone who asks the question, um, and it's one of those things we where where the answer is we we want to do it, uh, but we need to lay some foundational work first, which is what this process is now to lay that foundational work, and then once that's done, then we can take it a bit more seriously and see how that would work. Okay, thanks, Jonathan. Um, we have a couple of other very good questions. So someone asked, after you finish a learn course, can I share the result to LinkedIn or social feeds? Like, does it have a share result functionality? I don't think that's something in Sensei. But that that's a great thing to create. It, like if, yes. if you want to create that as a GitHub issue in our GitHub repository, some way to exactly. share your 100% completed something. Yeah. So Sensei, what I do know is that Sensei does have um, like an like a like an email I think that gets sent out when you complete a course. 
Um, and so I would love to be able to have some kind of way that you can share that you completed that course. And that would be linked maybe to the fact that you completed it in your profile. Uh, that is definitely something that is that is more doable more easily. So if you feel like logging that issue for us, that would be amazing. And then we can start having a conversation. And that could be a very nice little stepping stone uh, towards certifications. Yep. And I popped the GitHub issues link again in chat. So feel free. Look forward to seeing that issue. <laughs> so another good idea someone had, any plan to implement faceted filtering options similar to Udemy, because it will be, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, Udemy, 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 um, will be easier for the end user to narrow down their result by combining different criteria like categories, tags, video length, recency, et cetera. And they provided this screenshot. Thank you so much for providing the screenshot. Um, I know that we did intentionally simplify the filtering um, and the taxonomy. I'm going to take over if you don't mind. Please um, go ahead. I'm going to take over for this one. So I'm going <laughs> to yeah. I'm going to share a little bit of the background okay. the, awesome. behind the scenes to this um, because I think it's useful to see and understand. Um, so let me uh, let me just find. Let me go back over here. So let's go to learn WordPress. So the, first of all, there is the search result option, obviously. Uh, so I can search here for security, for example. Okay, that was refreshing my page. So I can search for security and it'll show me all lessons related to security. Um, so fixing security vulnerabilities or essential security plugins. Um, but there is also an implementation of tags and categories. So what I want to do is I'm going to hop on over to this first lesson over here uh, and I'm going to log into my account. And don't worry, I won't show my password because it's all one passworded up, so I won't share anything with anybody. Um, and then I'm going to edit this lesson because I want to show you a little bit about what's happening in the background uh, so that you can see kind of where we, again, where we come from and where we're moving towards. So every lesson, um, once, once my internet decides to load, looks like something went wrong there. Wouldn't that be sad if the internet broke halfway through the presentation that's terrible very sad okay <laughs> let me let me see what's going on here let me hop into just the admin area um into the dashboard there we go so there's sensei uh let's just hop over on into a course let's just go to beginner developer And there seems to be a bug currently on Sensei, so I'm not able to go any further than this. So that's rather annoying. Um, anyway, um, so what I can actually do is I can just show you uh, in the lessons, I probably can show you the the categories and tags here. Maybe I can't, I don't know. We'll have to have a look. Um, okay, so I can't show you the, the, the detailed breakdowns, but we do have an audience uh, sort of category. So it's either user, developer, designer, whatever the case may be. Then we have experience levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Then we also have the option to add WordPress versions. So if, if a lesson is specific to a specific version of WordPress, we can tag that there. We also have included content. So does, you know, does this lesson include certain bits of information? We can add those tags. And then we have topics as well. So your topic could be user management or uh, post management or page management or whatever. As Catherine mentioned, we have tried to simplify the process for sort of the first version. Um, somebody said about using the quick edit. Oh, there we go. Uh, thank you to Laura for pointing that out. So there we go. Audiences, experience levels, WordPress version. There's included content. So accessibility, admin, admin toolbar, appearance, and, and the list goes on and on. It's a great list of content. And then, as we said, topics. For the first version, we've tried to keep it as simple as possible. So we've categorized it simply by user type. So user, designer, developer, um, or what we're calling uh, experience level, uh, and audience. So audience is contributors, designers, developers, speakers, users, experience level, advanced, beginner, intermediate. Then what we want to do is we want to gather feedback from the community because it got to a point where um, tagging the content correctly um, became a bit of a chore because we had so many topics going on. And so <clears throat> it was more important for us to get these learning pathways out there and get people using them and then gather feedback in terms of what are the most common things that you would want to be able to filter by. Um, so if you have some ideas around what you feel like are those most common things, so maybe it's specific to a different 
a piece of information or a specific user type or whatever. Share that information with us as you're going through these things. Um, and this is definitely not a, a fixed in stone scenario. We definitely want to iterate on this and improve it going forward. But we just realized that we kind of it, it went a bit too far with the, the vast variety of topics and things that we had. So we want to kind of scale it back a little bit and, and sort of start small uh, and then only add the tags and categories and things like that that we that we really need. Thank you. I'm just answering a question in chat. Um, we had a question from someone about the site editor. They said there were a few lessons that were applicable when using the site editor only, but I use the block editor. I don't remember the exact lesson, but any plans to update those lessons for block editor users? If I find it, I'll post. I'm not 100% sure what you mean there. If you mean that you, you use a classic theme which doesn't use the site editor. Is that what you meant? And if the person who asked this question wants to either type as Ed Duncan, if you want to type in the chat a clarification, or if you want to unmute yourself, feel free. Because I think the folk, yeah, great. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to remember exactly what I was doing. It had something to do with patterns that I was trying to do. And the lesson that I found online was given steps if you're using the site editor. So when I was trying to re recreate those steps we, with the block editor, it wasn't working for me. So that's what I was referring to. Well, I think so, some content, yeah, go ahead, Jonathan, you take can it. I, can I just clarify there? Because my understanding of it is the block editor is the core foundational editor. And then when it's implemented for the theme, it's the site editor. When it's implemented for the post or pages, it's the it's called the post editor or the page editor. So when when in your mind, when you differentiate between the two, was the one when you were trying to edit the site and the other one where you're trying to edit a post or page? No, I may be using the wrong terminology then. Basically, um, like I said, I don't have it in front of me, but the steps that, that I was trying to follow was referring to, I guess, to an older version of WordPress before the uh, block editor became the, the the new form of doing things. That makes sense. Okay, that makes sense, hundred percent. And yes, there is a so there is a big discussion around that. And I'm going to share my screen and do another quick uh, search on our blog. Uh, so if we go over to, we have a big um, a big discussion that we're having right now about. Uh, Replicating what uh, I'm not finding it now. Um, Catherine, can you remember what the title of that post was? It was something about all the content. Um, Which post are you talking about? There was a there, we we published a post recently about how we're going to deprecate. Maybe, maybe it's just been a discussion. Um, oh, maybe content deprecation. Correctly. Content deprecation. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's do that. See, I can't even remember. There's content. so many things we're talking about. Content deprecate, and then we should wrap up because we're going a little bit over time. I'm not going to find it. Anyway, we'll share, we'll share it afterwards. But okay. yes, that's a big discussion we're having around what do we do with older content? Uh, some folks say we should keep it because it's useful because sometimes you're working with an older version. Uh, some folks say we should look at deprecating it. One of the things you may have noticed on my introduction to Gutenberg block development video is there's actually a big note right at the top saying this tutorial was recorded at this date. A lot has changed and then it links through to the new one. So that's something we're busy working on as well is taking our older content that might still be relevant for older versions of WordPress, like the classic editor, and then including notes about saying, you know, if you're on this version, go over here. Um, so that's also something we're definitely working on and hope to improve in the near future. Awesome. Thank you. And I think I found that post you're referring to, so I popped ah, that in there the we chat. Go. Content, content maintenance. You see, I think I can develop that. I think of deprecation, but it's content yes. maintenance. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you so much to everyone for coming. Thank you for all the amazing questions. Um, excellent, excellent thoughts. And thank you for all the ideas about making learn.wordpress.org even better. And I would encourage everyone to, if you're excited, if you're inspired to uh, get involved in some way, even if it's just creating one little issue in GitHub or popping into training and observing uh, things before you're comfortable to dive in or just saying hi. So I hope to see some of you uh, in Slack and in GitHub. And thank you again for for coming out. And yes, I will be posting this recording in the meetup comments. So you can look out for that. So thank you. Bye, everybody. Absolutely. Thank you.